put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Hello, hello. Series review. The setting is a small village in France. The year... The time period is World War II. And our lead is René Artois, the small owner of a small-time cafe, Café René. And he just wants to get by. He doesn't really get that involved in the war effort, not intentionally anyway. He just wants to live his small, relatively insignificant life cheating on his wife with both of his serving girls, having promised both of them to marry them after the war, and always keeping secret from his wife these twin affairs, and from both of the girls as well. You know, keeping secret that the other is... that he's having an affair with the other one anyway. But he's not allowed to stay out of the war. The Germans want his cooperation in their various operations. The French resistance wants his help. And yeah, I, th I think that's about all I should really go into to, so as to not spoil anything. And did I mention that his wife the French Resistance and the Germans have all threatened to shoot him in case, you know, he doesn't purchase, he doesn't do as they say, or in the case of his wife, if she discovers the affairs. And as everyone has various plans to, you know, pro to, to get some wins for their side, it gets very complicated. Everyone gets to play dress-up, some even several times in the same episode, and the attempts at explaining away all the odd situations that our main characters find themselves in, that includes the Germans, by the way, are some of the funniest moments of the entire show. This is a British sitcom, and yes, if you do not, if, if you are in any way offended by the idea of jokes about Nazism, this is not the show for you. Period. It is, however, one of the examples of British sitcoms, or British, British humor in general, basically being the Brits facing their history and having a laugh about it. Because if you're not going to be able to laugh about the horrible things that have happened that connect to your country in some way, you basically have no other choice but to try to ignore them. You know, as, as Germany has had a bit of a history doing. And so, everyone is made fun of here. Every major player of the Second World War, and most European countries at all involved with it, you know, not the Scandinavian countries, and not particularly America, there, are, there are, certainly aren't very many jokes regarding Americans. But yeah, everyone else is made fun of here. 
the French, the British, the, the Italians, and the Germans. Oh, how the Germans are <laughs> pushed through the wood chipper of comedy in this. Without going into too much detail about it in this video, rest assured, every joke that could be made about the Nazis are made in this. Most of them have a character devoted to them. With just a few examples given, we have one German officer who's really lazy in stark opposition to the ideal of the well-disciplined, strong German. We have a Gestapo officer who is stiff and never moves a muscle or changes his facial expression, pretty much. Even when he has just received a very passionate kiss from the woman who, you know, is has a thing for the you know, German discipline. And yeah, sex jokes are plenty, of course. <laughs> we have a, a, and we have one who is kind of the straight man who, you know, pretty much does live up to this the the, the German ideal, and he is of course ridiculed. There are times when the show just you know goes for the straight ridicule because you know. As you might expect them to, the British are not the biggest fans of the Nazis. And don't think that the British, you know... Actually, there, there are some of the biggest, you know, butt of the jokes. The, the British characters. Most of the pretty British characters in this are complete morons. They have no idea where they are or what they're doing. The French, of course, Either cowards or really, really proud and you know nationalist. The the humor tends to be pretty silly, although there are some very clever ones as well. And certainly the constructions of the various schemes and how it all comes together is just about genius. Really, it must have taken ages to write all this stuff and to make it all come together. Because it's not just that these various factions have different, you know, plans and agendas. It's that they somehow all come together. More, you know, several times in the show, there will be this, you know, massive scheme where everyone is out for something relating to the same thing. And the various groups are all maybe in the same area at the same time, and all keeping a watch on each other and having to, you know, just, and, and having these very detailed, intricate plots that they have to get to work out, and something happens, and everything just collapses. And actually, more often than not, the plans don't work, and that's actually, that's, that's part of the fun, just, watching how this smart plan, if, you know, very optimistic plan, just completely fall apart from something that, you know, just no one saw coming. And, as I said, you know, all these people dressing up as each other, sort of, and yeah, just having these various plans that keep that they have to keep secret from each other. The show is very it it you really do need to pay attention. Because if if not you'll miss quite a lot. M much of the fun, other than the running gags, which tend to be sort of character specific, or sometimes they have to do with a character meeting a character that they usually wouldn't, and you know, there being some fun with that. But a lot of the fun is, excuse me, these plans and the various, the details of them, and how that kind of, you know, the, the trouble with keeping secret all these plans for any you know, any of the factions. The... There is a lot of wordplay and we have a lot of verbal comedy. 
And in fact, non-British viewers, you might want to ensure that you can get subtitles because some of it, you know, there is a certain amount of slang. And in fact, on the subject of non-British viewers, if you, like myself, are more accustomed to American series, then do note that the average season of a British show has like six or seven episodes. They don't necessarily run the, you know, 22 and a half minutes. You know, episodes of this will vary between like 25 and 35 minutes, and that's just the averages. There's also like a holiday special, which is like 50 minutes long. And with this very... Actually, I haven't even mentioned that yet. Pretty much the entire thing, from start to finish, and just briefly on the ending, it's really, really well done. It wraps up pretty much everything, and quite satisfactorily, I might, I might add. But yes, right from the start, right to the finish, there is a, you know, it is one continuous story arc, pretty much, throughout the entire 10-year run, which, again, is not as much as, much as an American 10-year run, not as many episodes. So that does mean that if you, if you find that you have like a favorite episode and want to show it to a, a friend and it's like in the middle of the show, it's going to take a long time to explain and set up all the things. The show tries to sort of preempt this because they realize that it was really complicated. So every episode starts with Rene breaking the fourth wall, addressing the audience directly and explaining the current situation, which, you know, I don't know how often they air in Britain, but, you know, in case you forgot where the last episode ended or there was one detail you were unclear on, yeah, you have Rene explaining pretty much everything for that specific, you know, he's not going to reintroduce characters particularly, especially not if they've, if it's a character who's been in the show for a season or two, he's not going to bother to explain everything. It would be impossible, really. That does make marathons a little trying because they do spend like one or two minutes at the beginning of every episode explaining exactly what, and it's not necessarily particularly joke heavy either, you know. But those are pretty minor complaints. A little bit of a bigger issue, probably the show's biggest problem I'd have to say is whenever they leave the comfort of the sets. Outdoor shoots are never very attractive in this show and it gets particularly bad when it's nighttime shooting. I'm pretty sure there's no day for night in this. When they, you know, when there's a scene taking place at night outside, it was shot in the night and you can tell. Speaking as someone who's actually worked with film, you don't want to do that. You don't want to film in the night, especially if you aren't absolutely sure you have proper lighting and often that's a real problem in the nighttime outside shoots, exterior shoots of this show, you sometimes really can barely tell what's going on. And sometimes even on like location shoots, you know, even if it's not taking place outside, that's kind of a problem. And yeah, that just about covers it. Absolutely hilarious show. And with how intricate it is, with how rich the writing is, it stands up to multiple viewings. You're, you know, it's practically impossible to actually remember everything in this show. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.